Vegas. I can tell you this, Shannon, I'm in Vegas, so I am going to hold it wide open and send it all weekend long. Fun weekend in NASCAR ahead. It all begins tonight with the Craftsman Truck Series. Right now, Xfinity cars hitting the track for practice and qualifying. I'm no weatherman, but I can tell you it's windy in Nevada. Gust 50 miles per hour right now, 23, and it will impact these race cars. So good to have you with us on this Friday afternoon with Michael Waltrip. I'm Adam Alexander. So we've laid out there the wind is going to be a factor. How do you approach this 20 minutes of practice anticipating more wind for the race tomorrow, Michael? Well, first of all, when we visited the garage area this morning, my hair was a mess. That <laughs> wind is was that really where you're going to start? Crazy about that. <laughs> I use extra product myself. You're good today. today? I tell you, we had a great qualifying session in the truck series. The thing that was most interesting to me, you're going to hear everybody talk about the wind and how it affects the cars. The trucks were like 12 miles an hour faster going into turn three. That is crazy. Then you think about the challenges that this mile and a half percents without the wind, add that in there, they're going to have their hands full. If you're planning on sending it, like Jesse said, uh, hold on, because when you send it into three, you're going to be hauling. It's going to be a very interesting day uh, and night ahead, and of course tomorrow as well with all this wind. Let's Let's go down to the uh, pit area and hear from our man Regan Smith. Well, Adam, you and Michael just hit the nail on the head right there. The wind is the topic of conversation down here in the pits. Crew chiefs and drivers both alike trying to figure out what to do during this practice session, the first mile and a half practice session of the year for the Xfinity Series, what they're going to do to get a read on their cars and understand what they need for tomorrow. And we got to keep in mind as well, the wind tomorrow expected to be worse than today. I don't know how it can be much worse because it's very windy down here right now. So a lot for these guys to take into consideration as they make their laps. And a couple guys also that are struggling to get through right now and may not get laps Eric and we'll roll one of the cars that's back there uh, Jeb Burton was back there and Shane Van Gisbergen looking like they may be struggling to get any practice laps for that rookie driver on this Las Vegas racetrack I'm not worried about Eric or Jeb <laughs> but Shane Van Gisbergen needs all the track time he can get Michael it's Sin City hosting NASCAR this weekend Xfinity cars on track when we return All eyes on ah. Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Is it me or is this joint buzzing? Because oh. just a few weeks removed from the Super Bowl here and now NASCAR in town and everybody feeling good about sports in Las Vegas. And what about where NASCAR is right now with the energy around the sport? The great three wides finished last week. So much energy just around this sport alone and now coming to Vegas with the fun. How windy is it? We asked that question off the top. Brandon Jones has some thoughts. And then wind-wise, it's going to be a tailwind pretty strong into three, obviously. So a lot of the truck guys are talking about how much it picked the speed up into three and then just felt bogged down on exit of four. But it'll probably definitely push you off into three a few times. You have to get used to that to make sure you can hit the bottom. But other than that, that was the only place it really felt it. Yeah, that's a big difference. And you see the back of the of that Camaro. The spoiler's smaller back there. The, the, the trucks have that big back window, so the wind's pushing them harder, but it's still going to be significantly different as they shoot down into turn three. You reckon this guy will be any good this weekend, Austin Hill? Does he have a chance tomorrow, Michael? I'd say if, um, you know, if you're in Vegas and you had a couple extra dollars, you might decide that uh, you could, you could uh, pull for him, bet for him. I'm not sure it would pay anything, though, because he wins all the time. I mean, there might not be much of a return on your investment. Look at that work in that wheel. I just love the differing driving styles. I liken race car drivers to golfers. They can come in all different sizes, and they can go about it all different ways and still produce winning results. And he's got a lot of wheel into that thing, really working it back and forth, feeling out what he has. Great look at what he's doing inside the race car, Curtis of our Bennett Transportation onboard camera. Did you see that? Was that 197, the high end of three? Now we got a little bit of a draft up there, so that's going to help. Look at that speed, barely moving. Lost our pylon there when we were trying to compare the speed, but we're going to follow that story all throughout this quick little session. There's Jesse Love. Qualifying. How do you think he's feeling? Well, I was going to say qualifying coming up in 20 minutes, and he's excited about that because when <laughs> it comes to qualifying in the Xfinity Series, all he does is win the pole. 2-0 and oh so far. Daytona, Atlanta, he led him to the green both weeks.
RCR has won here three times. And when you look at what they have accomplished so far in 2024, mentioned the polls for Jesse Love, the wins for Austin Hill, the stage victories for them as an organization. Can't do much better than what they have accomplished so far this season. This is a different challenge for Jesse, new to this game. What about this guy, hometown cat? And what happened here last fall? Big win. Huge win. Dominating performance from the back. Qualified inside the top 10, had some unapproved adjustments, so he had to start in the rear. No problem for Riley Hurst. First victory of his career. A week removed from his 25th birthday. We're on board here. It's the Ford Performance onboard camera. Let's rewind to last fall. Here's that win I was talking about, Adam. You talked about going to the rear to start this race. Just put them away. He came from the back to finish top 10 in the opening stage. Won stage two and laid it on him in the final stage, winning by more than 14 seconds, the largest margin of victory ever at Las Vegas Motor Speedway in an Xfinity car. Adam, I don't, it'll never go away. Anytime I get this view of a driver working that wheel and doing, doing his job, I, I want to get in that car so bad. I want to be out there doing just that. See if we can catch the speed down the front. Pretty, pretty open front straightaway right now. He's going to hit 189, I saw. That's the best we had right there, 189 into turn one. If he's got a good exit off turn two, Watch how fast that speedometer just goes up. Still all in front 92 there. Listen to work that gas too. That's really, really hard to do when you're here at Las Vegas dealing with the wind. As it pushes you into turn three, your car, it just doesn't want to turn quite as good. And then when you whip it down there, the wind hits your left side, makes you loose. Just a real challenge. You mentioned putting some money over at the casino on Austin Hill. How about Parker Retzloff? That would have a huge payday on the backside. Retzloff, two top fives to begin the season, third in practice today, Michael. Just a really great story. Adam, you and I laughed a lot about seeing him at Phoenix last year. We get to see these kids right off the bat, and we're like, this, this guy's special. He just does great things behind the wheel, and what a great uh, job this team has done in 2024 as well. He and the boss, Jordan Anderson, top five at Daytona. And Retzloff, I mentioned, backed it up with a top five finish at Atlanta last week. There you see the numbers. Cole Custer, second quick, was third here in the fall, the reigning champion in the double zero. Saw him walking in the garage area this morning, Adam, and just that confident swagger, being the champ, you know, walking in. And I said, what do you think about this win? He said, well, Mike, there's nothing I can do about it. Um, but when there's been races in his career, he says, and he named California a track that has a lot of wind at times. And he said, you just have to, it's sort of like Josh Williams, the spotter was telling his driver, just be prepared for it. Know it's there and then deal with it accordingly. Custer looking for his first top 10 of the season. They have run better than they have finished. So Custer is second, just in front of him on the scoring pylon, Brandon Jones. And it's appropriate that he's driving for Junior Motorsports because JRM has had a lot of success here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Three of those JRM Chevys inside the top five. Jones leading the way, Custer, Retzloff, then it's Sammy Smith and Justin Allgaier. Practice underway in Sin City for the Xfinity cars, 13 minutes to go. Sunday on Fox, the NASCAR Cup Series is here in Las Vegas. Catch the best drivers in the world in an all-out battle for the checkered flag. It all begins with the pre-race show at 3. Engines fire at 3.30. It's only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Actually going to begin our pre-race coverage over on FS1 with race day. Then hop the Fox, a full Sunday of motorsports here on the Fox family and networks. Chandler Smith. And they're working that wheel. Chandler six quick so far in his number 81 Toyota. 
the best of the Toyotas from Joe Gibbs Racing, and maybe we shouldn't be surprised because a season ago, he was outstanding here. So close to getting that first career win when we came here in the springtime. Top fives in both the spring and the fall. Has a truck win here. Quite capable is Chandler as we watch those eyes, courtesy of that Toyota onboard camera. Down to 165 or so in the center of the corner, working it up toward 180. 50, really good. Really good, he's told. That's what you want to hear on the long run. It's really important. That's why when I think about Jesse Love, he doesn't have a lot of experience in these cars. And this track, just getting out there and busting off a lap right off the bat, that's hard to do if you don't really understand exactly what all you have. But when you're Chandler Smith and you're six quick overall, but your spotter tells you your last lap, which is his 18th lap, was a 50 really good, that's what you want to hear. He's staying out there, so you know he likes his car and the speed is there. You see the numbers for Chandler Smith a season ago. That was when he was at college. Now at Joe Gibbs Racing. Here are the new faces at JGR. Shelton Creed makes the move from RCR. Solid start to 2024 for him. We talked about Chandler and what he's been able to accomplish behind the wheel of a Toyota. And look who's back. <laughs> Eric Almarola making his season debut here tomorrow. Going to run 15 races for the coach. Did you know he made his first ever cut start for Joe Gibbs Racing right here at Las Vegas 17 years ago. What a career it's been for the young man from Tampa. I'm glad to see him with this opportunity, mentoring the young drivers over at Joe Gibbs Racing and getting to drive himself. He can fill out the equipment, understand exactly what he's talking about as he works with his drivers. It's a little bit loose there in the three, and that's what we might see. Guys having a little bit of trouble as they skate down into that turn. A.J. Allmendinger has a win here at Las Vegas, came 2021. The Dinger seventh right now in practice with eight minutes to go. Trying to roll out of the throttle, but as I roll out of the throttle, it it's like gives me a quick snap, and then that just gets the back dance. Since if I can drag the brake into one, keep it settled to the white line, then it's okay. And I'm maybe just a tick tied off, like on a good corner, and like three and four there, trying to back the corner up, and with the wind and the way the car is, like it snaps really bad. And then from the rest of the corner on, I'm just kind of hanging on to the back. Front seems okay, but it's really I just can't turn the wheel. That's a lot of information. A, I hope Alex Johns is a fast rider. <laughs> He's just <laughs> yeah, putting it out there. He said, this is what all's going on. Now, can you just fix it? You know, that's what you want to, uh, to do as a driver. You want to give the crew chief all the details you can. And uh, that was a lot of details. Caution for Anthony Alfredo in the five coming off a top 10 run last week at Atlanta. He had top 20 speed too, 18 quick was Alfredo. It looks like a lot of damage to the right side of that five car. Ooh, blew a right front. You can see the car just took off to the outside wall and that's a, had every look of just cut down that right front tire. That was his fourth lap. So there could have been maybe a, a, a rub on the suspension or something. And eventually it just blew the blew the tire out. That's a shame, too, because like I said, decent speed for the five. The good news for them, so many times you practice qualify same day as your race. Plenty of time to get things buttoned up with their organization prior to going green here tomorrow. Just over four minutes to go. Xfinity Series practice at Las Vegas. Caution is out for Anthony Alfredo. Yeah, I said he blew a tire. He had another opinion on what might have happened. For sure, because I heard something pop. Yeah, something broke, and that could have blown this tire out as well. So just a combination of things. Something in the steering in the right front looked like went away, and that, that car's hurt bad. Glad he's not. He said it was big, so you know he felt that impact. Sunday on Fox, Caitlin Clark, the all-time NCAA women's scoring leader, is only 18 points away from Pistol Pete's NCAA scoring record. Now in her final home game, she leads number six Iowa against second-ranked Ohio State. Witness history Sunday, 12.30 Eastern, only on Fox. A big one in the Big Ten. Have you watched her play? Oh, I just love it. She makes three-pointers from the logo mid-court. I mean, she is an amazing athlete, and I just love watching her play.
We did a promo for her last week during the broadcast. Lagana was up here. The one thing he noticed, she's number 22. Yeah, of course. <laughs> he would. My lunch number this week was 22. I sent a picture of that to Logano. I said, this means one of two things. Either you're going to win this weekend or Caitlin Clark's going for 40. <laughs> and he replied and said, I need it worse than she does. <laughs> <laughs> she only needs 18, right? Shane Van Gisbergen, we announced off the top, Regan talked about the fact they had some issues in the inspection line. He was a little late coming out. He gets four laps in, and now you get this extended caution period, tough break for him as he's trying to gain as much knowledge and track time as he can get. So I grew up just south of Auckland in a place called Manukau. Yeah, we sort of had just, I don't know, some cows, horses mainly, and, and a few dogs. Shane Van Gisbergen, the New Zealand driver, wins on the streets of Chicago. Going to Chicago, just enjoyed it. All the teams, all the drivers were so welcoming, and I had some great battles in the race, and afterwards, you know, everyone was pretty stoked and happy for us. It was, um, yeah, it's a pretty cool feeling. Remarkable just, story. Just set NASCAR world on its ear with what he accomplished. Just amazing drive that day, and... Uh, he's got his he's got his work cut out for him getting to learn all these racetracks, but certainly prove that he has the ability to go out and win at this level. Uh, amazing story, I think. 12th at Daytona. You saw it on the graphic third last week at Atlanta and looking for more of the same this weekend. Regan. Well, Adam, this win presenting challenges for a number of these teams, as we've documented many times. Part of that challenge is making your car consistent all the way through the corner, figuring out what it's doing, what the wind's causing, and what maybe the ha handling of your car is causing. But something else that I like that I just heard on the eight car of Sammy Smith's radio, he was talking about the rubber going down on the racetrack already. The track on the bottom already building up rubber. He noticed that his car is getting tighter in that rubber, of course, tomorrow. As we get all these Xfinity cars out on the racetrack, that rubber's going to continue to build. It's a good sign if it's going on the track already it usually breeds really good racing here when that happens he's being descriptive to his descriptive to his crew chief adam wall right now on what he needs to get across that better yeah the rubber going down is a big challenge but it also is fun for us race fans that means they're gonna be running up next to the wall they're gonna run all over this mile and a half facility good news for everyone involved we're gonna put five more minutes on the clock extend the practice session here at las vegas A couple of minutes to go, Xfinity Series practice here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. We extended the session after Anthony Alfredo got into the wall. Top 10 so far, Parker Kligerman, ninth. This team needs a good run after back-to-back -back weeks of bad luck to begin 2024. Looked like he was signaling there he's going to come to pit road. A lot of times these guys like to make a hot run to pit road and just feel what it's like to to make a green flag pit, pit stop. We usually have green flag pit stops here in Vegas. Let's go from one Parker to another. Regan, who do you have down there? Well, Adam, you mentioned they extended this practice session. One guy that does not need the extended practice session, though, Parker Retzloff, a great start to the year for you. Third at Daytona, fifth last week at Atlanta. Now third quickest in this practice session. How good is your car for tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, I think our car is looking pretty good right now. Uh, just feels good when the JR NASCAR guys bring a car as fast as Xfinity Mobile to the racetrack. I think that we have a good race car. We're going to try and lay down a good lap of qualifying and uh, hopefully put this Funkway number 31 on the pole and then have a good race tomorrow and keep building these points and hopefully lock ourselves into a playoff spot. Adam, always a good sign when you're out of the race car. Cars are still practicing. That usually means you're pretty happy. <laughs> I love that feeling, Regan. I know you do, too. You just have a lot of confidence and what a start to the season. John Hunter Nemechek, incredible a year ago, seven wins, including two on mile and a half track, second here in the fall at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, and he's driving a cup car full time now, but love to see him doing double duty, and he'll be driving that 20 car this weekend, next weekend, and at Coda in a few weeks. Another run to the pit road. There you see John Hunter getting a feel for it. He's 11th quick right now, is Nemechek. It's Dad Joe won here, 2003. There's what all the racers want to see. How am I in a 10-lap average? How am I on the long run? You know you can put a down a fast lap, generally, if you're one of these top teams in qualifying, but how does the fall-off work? And you can see by just a few hundredths of a second, Justin Algar is the best in that category. I look at that top three, 
and I'm like zero surprise <laughs> because all those drives were just the ones you anticipate are going to get it done. I'm with you, Adam. I don't think there's any real big surprises. John Hunter being outside the top 10 and not up there in those averages is a little bit surprising, but pretty solid session for that guy right there. Brandon Jones, the best of the bunch, qualifying when we continue from Vegas. Brandon Jones off to a good start in 2024, and he's carried the momentum to Las Vegas. Quickest in practice was driver nine, a lot of JRM. Chevrolet's in the top 10, all four of them, in fact, Michael. That has to make JR proud, <laughs> having fast cars coming out west. Old JR. Old JR, <laughs> laid back on the couch, <laughs> checking out his rides. Uh, that would be Dale Jr. Regan. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, Brandon Jones out of the car right now, and, and lots of hand signals with you and your new crew chief, Phil Bell. I don't know whose arms were moving more, yours or his. You're supposed to be driving this thing, but it looked like he was, nonetheless, looked like it was very good in practice. Yeah, man, we finally got some speed in this Menard Chevrolet. Definitely as fast as it's been the internet. And uh, looking forward to this qualifying session. I, I like qualifying at these mile and a half tracks where there's a bunch of grip and you got to get after it. And and we we're just discussing, we're going to hold it wide open, come to the green, are we not? Um, but the wind is pretty crazy. You know, you can definitely feel whenever you're getting uh, pushed, especially down in three and four, you can really feel it's trying to push you up off the line. But um, just trying to figure out how we can get a little bit more speed and race trim. I think we started off practice a little conservative there, just kind of with the unknowns of what the wind was going to do. So uh, we know our Delta, we know our adjustments to, to make on, on this car and, and get it to where it'll be uh, race ready. Qualifying always challenging here anyways. You got to go out and put that car on the extremes as you get through the corners. When you talk about the wind and not knowing how it's going to gust and how it's going to do things in the car, how do you go out there and have that confidence then to do what you need to do? I think it's about being present in the moment, you know, on, on these tires um, and feeling all those little details. You know, I don't think you can go out there and just predict it and guess. Um, that's the, that's going to make a bad lap, right? You need to go out there and just kind of drive it to the point of the tire loses a little bit of grip in the front or the back and give up throttle some and then hammer it back down. I know that sounds easier said than done, but that's kind of the mindset I'm having. You know, I think if I were to go out there and say, well, I don't think the wind's going to push us down here and I'm going to get loose, then you're going to be all behind. So just be in the moment on it and uh, try to get as much speed out of it as you can. All right, good luck being in the moment and qualifying. You made it sound easy to me. I think you can do it. Live action in the moment. <laughs> Let's live it. You went live action. I did. I love that attitude. <laughs> qualifying straight ahead. We're live in Las Vegas with the Xfinity Series on FS1. Hey, with Caitlin Vinci. Did you write that, Adam? Do you do you write your own material? I, Every turn can be a roll of the dice. Is I, that what you uh, said? Someone help me with that. Oh, I got you. Here's our Fox weather. It's still windy. This oh. is outrageous. Is you, how's your hair, Regan? I mean, it's windy down there. I, Adam, my hair is doing about as good as your hair is doing day. right now. Let's, it's a hat day. It is a hat day. Let's not, <laughs> let's not worry about those of us that don't have a lot of hair left. Cole Custer, so you got hair, Cole. You're fine with, with a hat on, too, though. Uh, second quickest in practice that we just finished up. Did you learn what you needed to learn about the double zero? Yeah, I thought I thought our car was pretty good. Obviously, second on the board. I thought short run speed was where we need it. Um, the car looks great. Production Alliance group on it, so we're pumped. Hopefully, get a dark horse in victory lane this weekend. Um, but... I think we need a little bit more long run speed. If we can just get it to wrap the bottom that little bit longer, um, about 10 laps into a run, I think we'll be where we need to be. But um, I think we'll have, have some of the tomorrow. All right, good luck in qualifying. Thanks. Wrap the bottom. That's Paint the line. Yeah, that's the race car driver's dream. When you put that floor, uh, that gas pedal on the floorboard, and you're able just to just follow that white line around late, late, late off the corner, not push up, that's what you're hoping for. If you've been watching qualifying the last couple of weeks, it'll change your pace this week, not at a drafting track. So we do one round, and I have good news to report. 38 cars here. Everybody makes the show. First out of the gate, Kyle Sieg driving the 28. RSS Racing, the family-owned team. Out of Tucker, Georgia. There you go. See his older brother, Ryan, later. They have four Fords entered in the field. What a commitment from that organization to grow their team. Have more opportunities to develop young talent. 31-15 for Kyle. Have to see what the standard might be early in the going. I'm thinking they're going to be down in the 30s pretty good. Josh Williams, he needs to get off the snide. Big opportunity for him going over to drive 
for college full time in 2024. We've told his story so many times, but they've just had no luck. Both Daytona and Atlanta having issues the last couple of weeks, hoping for a bounce back. Even though he, he was able to muster a 16th place finish last week, they fought that car hard all night long in Atlanta. You know, I saw him in Daytona in the infield area, Adam. He said, this is my chance. This is this is what I've been dreaming of and living for. Now you just got to take advantage of it. That didn't look like a really smooth lap. Down in turn one, two particularly looked a little bit loose, and he didn't run that great 31.59. Kyle Sieg with the 31.15. CJ McLaughlin and the 38. This track's really challenging, especially in qualifying trim, because it's not just wide open, but you can almost go wide open. And you heard uh, Brandon Jones so eloquently describe how it is to be in the moment and live. And you got to adjust. You can't just make a plan. You've got to li live it live and adjust your line and adjust what you do accordingly to how the car is handling. So McLaughlin, the team car to Kyle Sieg. And a good bit slower, 32-23. 32 this week, not Jordan Anderson. It's going to be Sage Karam who comes over to make his second start of 2024. And that's not the way you want to come to the green flag. It just didn't seem like it had a lot of speed as he went into turn three, which you're getting that wind push down the back like we've talked about. Just really need to take advantage of getting up to speed quickly. Not quite as important as it is at Daytona or was it Atlanta, your launch, Adam, but it's still part of the game. You want to get that car wound up as fast as you can, leave pit road, get her wound up and run hard into turn three. He looks like he's got his hands full. He's not going to be the only one probably driving <laughs> compromised. Sage is fourth, Regan. Adam, the guy that has absolutely been perfect in qualifying this year and in your Xfinity Series career, two races, two poles. Can we get the third one in a row today? Yeah, I hope so. You know, this uh, Will and Engineering Camaro felt pretty good in practice. I know like, we didn't post a great time and a lot of traffic. That was like the biggest thing that caught me off guard is we were one of the first ones to roll. And then by the time I got into three, we were like four wide. So um, I thought we're pretty good. We're about to go find out if it's as fast as Xfinity Internet or not. But um, a little few things for me to work on. Just being patient with the line in three and four is probably the biggest thing. Like, there's some laps that were really good, and then the next lap I kind of missed it a little bit. So I got to tighten some few, a few things up on my end. And uh, but the wheel and car looks obviously really good, so I think maybe a good shot. Adam Jesse Love, he's sounding like a veteran down here to me already with what he's talking about. I, Regan, I loved everything he said. I, I'm a believer. I'm a believer in this young man. He obviously a lot of talent behind the wheel, and just has a great spirit about him too. Loves what he gets to do. Dawson Cram goes to the top oh, yeah. in the four for J.D. Motorsports, 31.09. Nice job by Dawson. Been following him since he was 16 when he showed up in the Truck Series garage looking for opportunities, and now he's got a great one with J.D. Motorsports. Patrick Emmerling in the 07. Stand out on the modified side, running for SS Greenlight Racing and Bobby Donner. Looks like he's a bit off the pace that Dawson set. really seen one that looks overly stable so far, Adam, and that's what Jesse Love was describing, being patient, making sure you don't overshoot the entry to turn three with that big push from the wind. Get it down on the bottom. Six cars on track. Emmerling is third, 31-31. Here's Garrett Smithley, teammate currently top of the board. Raced here nine times so he's he's starting to get the feel for this place wouldn't you guess well he's become a veteran everywhere we go i mean you and i really in our stint here the last 10 years covering xfinity and of course branching over to the craftsman truck series as well you see garrett pop around see him from time to time running a cup car become a very versatile racer tracking fifth and that's where he will be of the seven cars that have taken time. 31-86 for Smithley. Joey Gase in the 35 is the eighth car out. Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Joey's always has nice looking cars and raises awareness for donors and just 
great, great initiative that he and his family are on there. Tremendous cause, far beyond what he does behind the wheel of the race car, using his platform for good, no doubt. Did you see that car bouncing into turn one? We will hear about that all weekend long, how rough turns one and two is. It's funny to me, Phil and I were talking on the truck broadcast, there's a tunnel down there, and Phil says, how come everywhere there's a tunnel, the track's rough? Can't they just dig down deeper? But it seems to change the uh, character of the racetrack, which for me, that's not a bad thing. Watch him. Down the back stretch here. Blaine Perkins, another one of those cars from S uh, from uh, RSS Racing had that top 15 run to begin the season at Daytona finished 20th here a couple years ago top 20 finish in Xfinity you're starting to learn and understand what it takes to go up and co compete for top 10s looks like a pretty smooth three and four there There's no out of bounds here. You can go way down off the track, as you'll see most everybody do on the front straightaway. Lane Perkins is third, 31-30. Dawson Cram leading the way in qualifying. Nine cars have taken time here at Las Vegas. Qualifying underway for the NASCAR Xfinity Series here in Las Vegas. Dawson Cram fastest so far as we send it to Regan. Well, Adam, hometown guy, hometown guy Riley Herbst getting ready to go out and make his qualifying laps. Great memories last time that we were here at Las Vegas. Do you still smile when you think about that first career win here? Oh, you have to, Regan. And honestly, I'm I'm pretty excited. Our, our car handles pretty similar to how it did last fall on the, uh, on the race pace, 10-lap average. So I'm excited. I think we need to get our short run a little bit better compared to the field. But um, Davin and the guys have been working really hard, and hopefully we can go get a, another trophy from Las Vegas today. You're a Las Vegas guy. Where should Adam and Michael go to dinner tonight? Ooh, um, I would call up Brendan Gone, have him put you in Michael's, or you could come over to, to my house. I think my mom's cooking spaghetti or something, so whatever you want. We'll, be there, we'll be there at 8. Yeah. Michael, Where? what are you doing tonight? Do you have something going on? Yeah, I'm going to Riley's house and having <laughs> spaghetti. With my I thought you were doing the truck race. Oh, I mean, after that. I'm going to pair that spaghetti with a nice Chardonnay. Hmm. 92 is Nick Lights. He's fifth. Pretty tight times, Adam, from first all the way back to Lights. Even Joey Gase, all those cars within a three-tenths of each other. And I got some bad news on Joey Gase. Uh, they didn't tape up the Nacaduct on the right side. That's a no-no in qualifying, so the Gase time will be disallowed. But I mean, with 38 cars here, he'll just have to be in the back at the start tomorrow, and he'll be able to make the field. See her bouncing through one and two there. It looks yeah. like a handful. And then you get rewarded. How much fun did we have here a few years back, Adam, when she won the dirt race across the street, and then she came to the booth and, and covered some of the practice with us? First time we had really had a chance to interact yeah. with her on the media side, talking about Haley Deegan, who pretty solid lap here, going to put her third, 31-25, made her debut here a couple of years ago in Xfinity and finished top 15. Yeah, she did a great job in that race and should be fun to watch tomorrow. J.J. Yaley in the 14. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but he's already looking forward to next weekend's race. Be a home game for him when he heads back to Phoenix. I'm not saying J.J.'s old, but he finished eighth here in 2006. So he's seen a little bit. I saw bit. that too. He's seen a little bit here at Vegas. 24th at Atlanta. Last week out. Look at the lap he's got going. Big time in the green for J.J. Yaley. That's solid. No doubter. He is quickest. 30 80. I talked the about six cars separated by three tenths. He just put three tenths on second place. I was talking earlier about the bumps in one and two. This is something that will really be a part of the race tomorrow. Who can get through these bumps the best? Here's Haley sliding down into turn one. And then, watch, bam, bam. You can see the car just porpoising back and forth and really making it uncomfortable to drive. You get the right shock combination at them and all their springs, everything the way you want them, 
you get through there without being able to see all those bumps, that's a winning car. Here's a budding superstar in NASCAR, Corey Heim. And right on cue, 30-31, that's fast for the Toyota, making his first start of the year, double duty as he will run in the Truck Series race later tonight. Made four starts a year ago for Sam Hunt Racing. And that's what we thought we would see, something down around 29, 30 flat into the 29s. Pace is picking up right now. Ryan Ellis, 34-year-old out of Virginia, he, he had a decent practice session, had some good speed. Put him on the short list for paint scheme of the weekend, classic <laughs> collision is his sponsor. They love to do theme schemes based on the region of the country we're racing in. Their designer is actually from right here in Las Vegas. And man, that thing is lit up and looking good. It's got a Vegas look to it, doesn't it? Perfect. Look at the hands in there, working it. Working overtime on a Friday afternoon. Third for Ellis behind Haim and Yaley. I think that time for Haim is gonna be one we'll Watch as a standard to be up there in the front. See what John Hunter is able to do. Toyota leading the way in qualifying. Here's our second Toyota to go out in the session. John Hunter Nemechek, ghost car in and pacing just a bit behind Corey Heim. We're going to do the truck race here on FS1 in a bit, Adam. And Heim just was surprisingly slow in the trucks. Has to feel really good to get out there in the Xfinity car and have that type of pace. That was a great lap. Here comes John Hunter, all four. Second half of the lap is good for Nemechek, and he goes to the top. 30-23, Regan. Well, Adam, you and Michael were just talking about the bumps into turn one and how violent they look at times. So let's ask the guy who was seventh quickest in practice about that, A.J. Allmendinger. The bumps, as you get into one, what are they like this year compared to past years? Uh, well, I'm trying to get used to the Xfinity car again. That's that's the difference. A cup car, you go in there wide open and just bounce around. So uh, this Action Industry Chevy is pretty good. It's, you know, it's a combo of the bumps. And then you, if you get a wind gust that hits you kind of at the wrong time. Um, but yeah, qualifying, it's, uh, it, you got to you gotta hold on tight. So uh, I'm shaking a little bit, but thank God I got Celsius to calm me down a little bit here. But you're going to have to hold it almost wide open to get pulled. Hey, you know, Adam's been picking on hair and the wind blowing stuff around. <laughs> I hope that your race car sticks as good in qualifying as your hair is right now. Not any movement in his hair, Adam. It looks perfect down here. That's a full bottle that's, of something. I, I don't know what it was. That's tight right there. <laughs> if you hear a kid say, uh, my hair's tight, that's what you got with AJ. You what know a, who was tight? Lee yeah. Honeyman. I was going to say, Adam, that was beautiful. 30-63, third fastest for the 42. And just like J.J. Yaley, he's going home next week into Phoenix. Last year, he made his series debut at the Desert Mile. Kyle Weatherman, top 20 in practice, is next out in the 91. Look at that. That's wrapping right there. You can see how low he holds it in the corner. Decent looking lap going up in the top five so far. Put him fourth. That sounded like a pleased spotter. Felt pretty good about that. A little tire rub here on the 27. Jeb Burton. Body really wants to shift over to the right when it goes in the corner, making that left rear tire rub a little bit. You can smell that inside the car too, and it, make, it gets your attention. <laughs> it's like, I uh, hope that's not too bad, but he's not gonna let up. Let's see if. Remember when Nemechek really rallied through three and four and and passed Corey Heim on our ghost tracker? See if some more cars and see if Nemechek just really nailed three and four or what the deal was there. Fifth for Burton, 30-71. Needs a good run this weekend. Off to a slow start in the 27. They've had some bad luck. Some big names when we return going out in qualifying. Eric Almirola on our list. So is... Justin Allgaier, Junior Motorsports, always good in qualifying at Vegas. Just about halfway home, and Toyota's leading the way in qualifying here in Las Vegas. Nima check in front of Heim. Let's break this down. Look, as you see, Heim's been able to put just a little bit of distance on Nima check as they race off turn two, but evidently John Hunter just really nailed three and four because he put it on them down there be fun to watch the rest of this session, Adam, and see how good John Hunter is against the rest. Or maybe Corey 
Yeah, maybe slid up just a little bit as he went into turn three. I hate to say it, but I wrote Nemechek off. I, I thought he was going to be second to his Toyota teammate, and he came back and got it done. And I would say this gentleman out of the Toyota camp, quite capable as well, Eric Almarola in the 19. He'll drive it again next weekend at Phoenix. Look at that pace. Tracking a tenth to the good. Might we see our first driver down into the 29 second bracket? I don't think the ghost car is going to offer any drama here. <laughs> Almarola is just too good. Remember how John Hunter was so good in three and four? He closes a little bit. But not enough. Almarola fastest, 30 16. That's fun technology, isn't it? You can really see who does what, where, when. I said a lot there, didn't I? Hmm. I like the ghost car, is what I meant. I'll paraphrase. The race within the race. Brennan Poole in the 44. Driving for Tommy Joe Martins, his teammate Ryan Ellis on the board in eighth right now. What you want to do is just pace along with or better than your teammates. I mean, your teammates are your buddies. You want to see them do good. You just want to do a little bit better than them. See what kind of pace Brennan has. Track and fourth. Good lap. 19th car out. This will put us at the halfway point. He stays in that fourth spot. 30-51 for Brennan Poole. Good lap. Veteran driver from the Woodlands, Texas, and this will be a good measure of speed. Justin Allgaier, four runner-up finishes here. <laughs> He's hungry. Feels like the place owes him one and should be a threat in qualifying as well. Oh! Big slide. Is that a flat tire? A flat tire. Flat tire. Yeah. Nice catch. Wow. I mean, you're on. You're on the gas. You're. You're sending it, as the kids like to say, and uh, have a flat tire during that. Holy cow! I can't believe he saved that race car. A little bit of smoke on the left rear. I think it's the right rear that goes, though. What a save. That was just huge. Well, we talk about the bumps and how difficult that part of the track is to navigate anyway, and he's able to feel it out, hang on to it, and keep it off the wall. His, wow. His corn could have been shucked. <laughs> it was cooked, that's for sure. <laughs> it was, that, was, that was an amazing job. I know OJR is proud of him right now. Ryan Sieg, OJR. This is a good lap for the 39. Very good. Huh? How about it? Sieg at a 30.023. He is quickest. Heck yeah. 30.02. Good job, buddy. Good job, everybody. There you go. How about that? Regan? Adam John Hunter Nemechek just getting bumped back to the third position. You and I stood here, though, and watched Justin Allgaier's save just a moment ago. How good was that save, and how tough is it for you guys going out here and qualifying and being on the edge like that? Yeah, his car is definitely turning good, maybe a little bit too good there. Um, that heck of a save by Allgaier. Um, we need to get ours turning like that, just just not quite as, as much as that. But our Albertson's uh, Toyota GR Supra, um, I thought was really fast, uh, almost as fast as Xfinity Internet on the 10-lap run uh, average. So um, we got some work to do one lap speed but i feel like our long run speed is good so um early qualifying here going out early um, definitely stinks especially with the sun going down how much shade and how fast the the track cools off here in the desert so looking forward to tomorrow uh cup practice and then uh, go have some fun here in the nascar xfinity series thanks john hunter while they were visiting bj mcleod went 11th in qualifying a pair of top 20s for him so far in 2024 here's sam mayer in the one He's going to have a lot of speed. See if he can have anything for Ryan Sieg. Ryan's got a couple, a couple of top five finishes here, so he loves this racetrack. That's a great lap. Sam's trying to beat him, though. And Mayer got his fourth career win. Last fall came on a mile and a half at the Homestead Miami Speedway, so he knows success at the intermediates. Lost it off four, didn't he? He did indeed. It was right over top of Sieg until he came off of four, and he's going to end up for 30-29. Anxious to watch Parker Kligerman, who was top 10 in practice and trying to get a little momentum going after a couple of weeks of bad luck. You see them go into turn three, come into the green. They kind of take that high line in there. 
get it aimed and see if they can get more speed at the start line. I expect he'll go right to the bottom on this lap as he does in one and two. Great corner there. Look at that speed. You want underdog teams at the front? Give me RSS Racing. Give me Big Machine. Look how low. Can he stay in the gas? Oh, he's losing it, Adam. It's going to be close at the line. A little bit of a comeback. And by a nose, Sieg in front of Kligerman, a 30.023 to a 30.037, 14 one thousandths of a second. Separate the top two as we check in on the nine of Brandon Jones. These other cats might have their hands full now. What a solid practice and what confidence we heard from Brandon Jones when we interviewed him about the session and how he feels about his car. A couple of wins on the mile and a half tracks for this young man. He's working on a streak of five consecutive top tens on mile and a half. Whoa, he goes high. Well, look at that. Look at that. He talked about living in the moment, making sure he understood how to adjust live. And that time he went into three with a lot of cushion and just slid up the racetrack, missed the bottom completely. Ended up fifth just in front of his teammate. He runs a 2.89 compared to a 2.92 from Sam Mayer. The champ is on track, Cole Custer. He's won a pole position here on two different occasions and started front row here last fall next to Josh Berry. How cool is that to be able to say? I interviewed Blaney on the grid last week. I saw that, it was great. It's like, you know, you're the champ. That's, and then Brian, I saw Cole walking in today. It just has a different feel to it when you're the champion. Probably eases the pressure just a little bit, as if there's ever no pressure for these drivers. They feel it each and every week, put it on themselves. And Custer delivers under pressure. He is fastest, jumps in front of his four teammate, Ryan Sieg, and the first to go south of 30 seconds, 29.78. And now we're on board with his teammate. Here a little bit of bottoming out through three and four coming to the green. Let's see what Riley Herbst has. Look at those eyes. Just so focused, this is intense. hear it bouncing through those bumps out of the gas right back in it so far Custer's got the measure of them dealing with the wind how will it blow you into turn three it could have been just as simple as that as Brandon went into turn three the wind could have shoved him up the hill fifth is where Riley Herbst fits into the equation so far. Cole Custer is fastest. Can Jesse Love stay undefeated on pole day? He's picked up the top spot the last couple of weeks. He's coming up on FS1. Fords lead the way in qualifying here in Las Vegas. Cole Custer is P1. P2 right now is Ryan Sieg. Regan? Oh, fantastic lap for Ryan Sieg. Very fast race car right there. Previous best starting spot at Las Vegas, 10th. I know we got 10 cars to go roughly right now, but I think you're going to better that today. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's uh, great to be top two right now with Fords, and uh, we brought a, a, fa a super fast uh, Cyab Chevrolet, or Cyab Ford, excuse me. Uh, and uh, you know what I mean? It's been been great working with Stuart Haas and, and all, Custers and all that, and trying to get everybody on board, and, and it's paid off. So this is one of our, you know what I mean, the race we were expecting to come out and kick some booty. and. We've already started. I didn't expect it to drive that good, but uh, we brought a car almost as fast as Xfinity's 10G, but uh, we'll see uh, how we are tomorrow, and it's great to start up front. All right, good luck tomorrow. Thanks. We've worked uh, kicking some booty into the yes, broadcast. Yes, we tonight. have. We've gone live action to kicking booty. <laughs> Having a heck of a qualifying show here, as you see, Sammy Smith tracking just off the pace of Cole Custer. Six right now, a couple of tents behind the man out front. And the second year driver from Iowa is going to go fourth right now. Sammy Smith, 30.062. Talk to AJ. So he's got to hang on during this lap. If we went back and played his radio from practice, he would have to make <laughs> two laps of qualifying to get it all in. He had a lot to say talking to Alex Johns on the radio during practice. And that's what Alex Johns is looking for, all that information. And he can shuffle through it, decide what he thinks AJ said that was most important, as you can Speed see. Speed of a half car length in the one, just didn't quite get to the bottom, as good. 
I don't think they're, I think he's talking to the spotter, to the crew chief, explaining to him exactly what he sees. Look how close this is. Is it going to be Yamendinger? Colleg has got a great history of qualifying here at Las Vegas. Not enough for the dinger. He is second, but he too is in the 29 second bracket. 29.90 <laughs> for the 16. Right. And now Jesse Love. Two for two, right? Two for two. This is going to be a challenge for the young man. Said he went out on the racetrack and was four wide before he knew it. This is a different world than Daytona and Atlanta, but look at the pace. Only driver in the history of the Xfinity Series to win a pole in his first two starts. The rookie Jesse Love had never seen this place before today. Solid lap for Love. The streak's going to end, but should start somewhere inside the top 10 or pretty close to it. Drift a little bit late and ends up 11th. So just outside the top 10 so far for Jesse Love, 30-29. Jeremy Clements coming off a top 10 finish in Atlanta last week. Yeah, that was fun to see. I love, to, I love when we interview Jeremy Clements. So much energy. Really works hard at his craft. His whole family does. 466 career starts. That's fifth all time. You know he had the fastest lap of the race on the final lap at Atlanta last week? Wow. That's a, that's a stat, huh? That's a good one. Using that draft. Top 15 for Clements, 13th, 30-33. That's so fun watching Cole. <laughs> like, there's absolutely nothing in the world he can do. And he's like, why are y'all looking at me right now? Five to go. First of those, Shane Van Gisbergen, fresh off a third place finish last week at Atlanta. This is a great story. Watching Shane figure this out. Not quite down on the bottom of the racetrack. Losing some time because of not getting down there, I think. Out of the gas into three. He's from New Zealand. You think he likes rugby? Yeah. Big rugby from yeah. Las Vegas tomorrow evening on FS1 following the Xfinity Series in college hoops. 21st. 21st. Yep. You and I had the same thought there, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good for no more practice than he got. That was like ghost car execution <laughs> by you and I. Parker Retzloff, really good in practice. Can he do anything in the 31? Really good in practice, not only on the short run for qualifying, but look at the speed off turn two. He's gaining. Did you see him put it on that white line? Right where I would want to be. See if he's got anything for Custer in three and four. It's going to be close. This car looks great. Slid up a little bit high on exit. He's not going to get Custer. But boy, is he going to have a great starting position tomorrow. Parker Retzloff is third, 29.98. Three to go. The first of those, last year's pole sitter in the springtime, Chandler Smith. You don't think someone said to Cole Custer, you know he's out on the pole <laughs> here last year. I hope they didn't. <laughs> he's got good pace. Look at that camera view of him behind the wheel. And look at that turn one and two by our ghost car. Oh, here comes Cole. Chandler Smith up the track just a little bit. Custer coming back. Going to be close at the line. Smith is second. <laughs> Custer stays P1, 2980 for Chandler Smith. Here's his teammate, Sheldon Creed. Sheldon. So much fun to watch in the trucks, and now he's come here and shown that he has the pace to win at this level as well. The new faces of Joe Gibbs Racing are showing out. Chandler Smith second right now, back-to-back -back top fives. Good lap going for Creed. He, too, started. 2024 with a pair of top five finishes.
And he's just a little bit slower than his teammate is Creed. It's going to be top 10 though, right? Eight for Sheldon. Final car, Austin Hill. Front row the last two weeks in qualifying. More importantly, he's won on race day and we'll see what he's got for him in qualifying here this afternoon. Teammate Jesse Love down in 14th. But the experience that Austin Hill has here, expect him to be in contention for this pole. He had a pretty decent one and two, still needs to make up some ground. Great track for Hill. Got the win here last year and those two truck wins. Solid effort in qualifying. This is the moment right here that Cole Custer's been waiting for. Austin Hill is fifth. Your pole sitter <laughs> is Cole Custer for the third time in his career. He will lead him to the green here at Las Vegas. Regan. Adam Cole Custer, the fastest man in the Xfinity Series here at Las Vegas, going to lead him to the green. Third pole. What is it about this racetrack and you being good in qualifying here? You know, I don't know. I mean, these guys give me a great car. I uh, can't thank Production Alliance Group, Dale, everybody being on the car. Ford uh, got a dark horse, a pole, so hopefully uh, get it in victory lane. But just need that little bit more long run speed. You know, this place, it's it's really starting to wear out and really the pace slows down the long run. So if we can get our long run speed a little bit better, I think we'll be right there. But perfect start to the weekend. This is the real true test of the start of the year. So I'm really pumped to start it off this way. Uh, you mentioned that the place is starting to wear out, need long run speed. We know the wind is going to be blowing tomorrow. How do you put all those things together and make sure that the double zero is perfect will come race time? Well, I think we have some great notes from, from Riley last year, and they were super fast in practice. So um, just figure out where, what I can do better, what we can get a little bit better, and uh, just try and be there at the end. You know, it's, it's going to come down to, you know, lap 10 on in the runs. You know, it's, it's definitely it's all about the long run speed here and trying to be good after 10 laps. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks, Cole. 19th career poll for Cole Custer. Puts him 12th on the all-time list, and he'll start up front tomorrow with Chandler Smith, who got it done in qualifying a year ago. This is a good front row. It is a great front row, and row two is entertaining for me, too. Almondinger and Retzloff right behind these two cats. Some really, really good stories inside the top 10 when it comes to qualifying. But the best of the bunch, the champ, Cole Custer, P1 when we go green tomorrow. Qualifying is done in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. The field is set. Lots of really good stories. I said it going to break inside the top 10 front row. Custer Smith, you said you like the Dinger and Retzloff in row two. I also love Ryan Sieg and Parker Klingerman back there in row three, four. How much, how much is 0.017 of a second, Adam. 17 thousandths of a second is right there on your screen. Custer to Smith. By a nose. Let's go down to Regan. Well, by that much, Chandler Smith ends up second in qualifying. I, I think you're thankful, though. We didn't show the full ghost, ghost car lap. You told me on the break just a moment ago, you really thought you had it till you got into turn three. Yeah, uh, I just threw it away again into turn three and got a little free and was just trying to carry a lot of throttle and wasn't able to get to the line and kind of just threw away my whole turn three and four. But really proud of everybody at Joe Gibbs Racing. We brought a really fast number 81 Toyota GR Supra. Um, it's definitely as fast as Xfinity Internet today and uh, look forward to see what we can give tomorrow. You've been very good here at Las Vegas. This track, a third place and a fourth place in your two races last year at this track. You were talking about rubber going down on the racetrack and challenges. What other challenges tomorrow are going to present themselves? Well, the wind was a big challenge here in practice, and I think it's only having half the gust of what we're going to have tomorrow. So I'm not looking forward to the challenge that it's going to produce tomorrow, but uh, luckily everybody's going to be in the same boat. Just it's going to be whoever can adapt to it and adjust their car to be best in those conditions. We're, we're not going to let you off quite so easy either. I think we've got the... Uh, the ghost car getting ready to, if, you, if you want to look over here and, and just talk me through this right now as you get into the turn three area. Yeah, so it looks like we're coming into turn one here. Uh, no, I was coming off turn three or four. I mean, you could just see how much speed loss there was from, you know, three quarter mark to the wall all the way down the front stretch. He was solid two miles an hour faster than the crumb across the line. But um, yeah, I just never got to the bottom. He did a really good job with the conditions and being mindful of being able to get to the line and get back to the throttle. And uh, yeah, he just beat me there. Simple as that. I got beat. Good luck tomorrow and maybe being the guy to cross the line first tomorrow instead. Yeah, let's maybe we could cut the race one lap short so I don't repeat what I did last year. <laughs> That'll be great. 
Thanks, Chandler. I, I thought the Smiths would hang together, but yeah. Regan just throws that ghost car right out there in his face. Right you know? at him. <laughs> and you know, uh, what I love, Adam, is back in the day, I didn't really know where I, you know, you didn't know really how much or how close things were. Uh, obviously, the ghost car offers these guys a great insight into what it takes to have the fastest lap. And Cole Custer just fast all the way around the track, especially off turn four. Nice manufacture mix inside the top 10 with the Fords. The Chevys and the Toyotas, teammates down there on row five. You got Creed, now Marola. Last year's winner, Riley Herbst, the hometown product, starting row six with John Hunter Nemechek. What about row eight? Jesse Love. He's going to see a view from the start that he hadn't seen yet. This will be educational series. tomorrow, right? Be. Because he's been up front controlling races. Now he's on an intermediate, going to have to come from row eight. That will be a challenge alongside Another young gun in Corey Heim. Row 11, you got Jeff Burton with J.J. Yaley. SVG there alongside Dawson Cram. All these rookies going to have to really work hard tomorrow because when it comes to the starting lineup, they're in a bit of a compromised situation. So I, I think about this. Qualifying is done. Practice is complete. 300 miles at this place. And knowing the history says we'll have a long green flag run. Take me through the level of concentration for these drivers and the pressure on the teams to execute tomorrow. It's just tremendous in that final stage. You can work your way. You can overcome a mistake early. But in that final stage, especially coming to pit road, if we have a green flag stop, which we've seen before, executing. You have to execute getting to pit road. you got to be efficient leaving pit road. So there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle these guys will be studying trying to make sure they understand exactly where they got beat last year as we heard uh the drivers say earlier about how challenging this place can be and then add in the win adam the win is going to be crazy and that's just another variable that will, will make a difference in who wins this race tomorrow restarts at las vegas chaotic out of Very control much. what do we anticipate there four four wide and maybe five at times because you've got so much room on this front straightaway. It sweeps around. You can go down low. It's just going to be everything you want in a NASCAR race. I know it's going to be a lot of fun for you to cover with a couple of guys that knows a little bit about winning in NASCAR. A little bit. Joey Logano, Austin Sendrick going to join us in the booth tomorrow. We look forward to having you with us live on FS1 tomorrow afternoon. Tonight, it's all about the Craftsman Truck Series. Race day is next, and we got the race later on. Here's a preview of tomorrow, practice and qualifying for the Cup Cars at 2. Race day at 4, we're racing at 5 with Sendrick and Logano in the booth. Thank you for watching with Regan Smith and Michael Waltrip. I'm Adam Alexander. Congratulations, Cole Custer. He starts on the pole tomorrow. We're doing trucks right now on FS1.